What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Eggs Avenue Show on the Eggs Avenue YouTube channel. As usual, I'm Patrick Hennessy. That's Sam Rourke. Dan, how are we doing on this beautiful, beautiful morning? Fantastic. Pat, it's one of those days where, or at least one of those nights after the Yankees finished their 3-4 out of four series win from Toronto, where I am, it might as well be the first episode of the Yankees Ave Show, dude. Like, I'm pumped to be here. I'm pumped to talk Yankees. I'm kind of ready to gas this team up, to be honest with you, dude. So, I'm doing good. It's a nice day outside, although it's nighttime when I say that. How are you? I'm 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 great. I'm feeling vibes are stupendous right now. You know when I word, use the word stupendous, you know that means like serious vibes. Dude, the Yankees are so back. It's not even funny. Positive Patty is back in the building. I was gonna Dude, say that. I'm feeling great. I can't wait to gas up this team. I can't wait for people to comment and be like, "Oh my god, you guys are like insanely positive about this team." Don't care because, bro, the ALEs better watch out because the Yankees are coming. You um, ever hear of bipolar disorder? Yeah, I think we have it. I think me, does. like, specifically, I, I definitely. But, the, dude, it's fine. You also call me, didn't you call me, what'd you call me, like, schizophrenic last week or something? Or that was somebody else. You you referred to me as some sort of. I don't, I don't think I called you schizophrenic. You called me something. There was a there was something, if we go back to the last okay. episode. But it's all good, dude, because vibes are through the roof right now, and we're going to talk about it. They are. Uh, before we get into topic number one, though, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Foco. Um, I Should we announce the giveaway now or in the middle of the show? I think in the middle of the show, but that was a good little tease. Yeah, nice. We have show. a giveaway coming, Foco. Um, stay tuned after topic number two. We'll announce it. But, uh, Dan, topic number one, we got to talk about this Yankees-Blue Jays series. We kind of came out of the Rays series with like a eh, taste in our mouth, right? They split the, the series with the Rays. I didn't really know how to feel about it because it's like they looked better, but also at the same time, like it resulted in a split. So it's like, how can you really feel too great about that? Right. But that's why I said, bro, this Toronto series was really going to define – my viewpoint of the New York Yankees. And after taking three out of four from the Blue Jays at, in Toronto, bro, with basically every single thing against them and having to overcome every piece of adversity you could possibly face, the fact that they took three out of four makes me feel so good about this team moving forward. And I am shocked of about how quickly the Yankees have kind of went from like rock bottom where we were viewing this team as like, yo, are they going to be 14 games back by the end of May? And now it's kind of, I'm looking at them as, the AL East is not out of reach because if they can stay hot and get some sort of major hot streak going, they can really give the Tampa Bay Rays a run for their money. I mean, I think we're just seeing the start of this hot streak that you speak of. I mean, the, for me, the rock bottom goes back to it's it's crazy because it's so recent, dude. April 30th, what happens? We lose 15 to 2 to the Texas Rangers. And that was probably like the peak of doomsday if you will it really is crazy man like we were kind of in a way having doomsday vibes at the end of april they were 15 and 14 looking horrible however since then i mean we can just kind of go in order here right happens what happens right off the bat harrison beta returns he immediately shows that like no he's not just some good defensive center fielder that if he runs into one great he's a legitimate piece of this team aaron judge returns quickly reminds us all that he's basically single-handedly capable of winning us games. And we saw that a lot in this Toronto series, saw it in the Tampa Bay series as well. Getting consistent production from DJ LeMahieu, Glaber Torres, Anthony Rizzo, dude, talked about him a little bit last week. One of the best first basemen in baseball so far this year. A lot of things are just clicking. Supplemental pieces like Willie Calhoun, Jake Bowers has been good. And dude, how about even Aaron Hicks? Shout him out a little bit. Yeah, Had a good game, Hicks. big game. He's looking better. Everything is just, it seems like almost like everything that was going wrong is starting to go right, even on the injury front. We'll talk about it a little bit later. Giancarlo Stan is on his way back. The Yankees are on a 93-win pace right now, Pat, and they're getting back Luis Severino, Giancarlo Stan, Carlos Rodon, a couple other pieces as well. They've actually really well handled this adversity that they've been yeah. dealt, kind of like exactly what you said. So, I mean, from within two weeks, I want to like, you know, going from where I was to now, I want to give them props because they've handled this very well. Not to mention, dude, they've actually had, it came out the other day, statistically, the hardest schedule out of any team in baseball so far. And also, speaking of that, I want to let you all know, our second half schedule, dude, I kind of like lightly glazed over it. I don't want to say it's a cakewalk, but it's dramatically easier than our first half. We've got a lot of the hard teams in a way out of the way in April, but yeah, dude, they've looked great. One more thing I want to mention, home runs. April, they hit only 34 home runs, which was 13th in baseball right around, you know, middle of the pack. And they finished 15 and 14. This month, they've already hit 33 home runs. And guess what? That's tied for first in all of baseball. And they have an 11 and 6 record, which is the best of any, any AL team so far this month. Yeah. Things dude, are looking I'm, good, dude. 
what we've seen uh, from the Yankees out of this Blue Jays series was very nostalgic, right? It, it, it brought back an emotion in me um, regarding the New York Yankees that I haven't felt in a long time, probably since the first half of last Yankees. season. And maybe like since the postseason, which it, it was very like postseason, like, yo, this game means everything kind of vibes. And I really think, bro, it, it was very reminiscent of 2018 do you remember like to start the 2018 season 2018 season and the yankees kind of like weren't off to a great start team with a lot of high expectations and then they go into boston have that brawl tyler austin bro that whole stuff and it felt like from that point forward the red sox gave the yankees like a, a, a weird ass spark that they needed gave them their mojo in a way they gave them like a an edge they gave them a yeah. little chip on their shoulder to work with and from that point forward it really felt like the yankees were there bro this is what that feels like the blue jays awoke a monster in the new york yankees they woke a monster in aaron judge we we didn't even touch on that whole cheating thing where Judge is like looking off to the side. We they will. accuse him of cheating, dude. That whole thing, and then Judge wakes up for for the rest of the series. I think he had what four home runs uh, over this, yeah, five home runs maybe, whatever over this four game stretch, dude. He absolutely murdered the Toronto Blue Jays. The Yankees kind of just. It, it, it really felt like that they had something to prove this series. And I think that they understood that. And the fact that they had that mentality and they played as such, it makes me feel so happy inside. And it really just makes me believe that like the Yankees can be killers when they want to. And I think the Blue Jays just awoke a sleeping beast, bro. I'm with you. I think the way I see it is to be clear, the Yankees have been getting better over the past couple of weeks, like entering this series. They've been looking better. Offense is finally starting to score. We've seen a bunch of, you know, five, six, seven run games that they've been able to put up. That's been huge. But what this series, in my opinion, did, it kind of gave them their personality. We now know who the Yankees are. You mentioned the word edge. I think that's exactly it. I said this last week. I'll say it again. It just felt like one of those games where you're young. You don't really know much about baseball, but you turn on the game to watch their dad and you just see a representative killer team that nothing's going to stop them this is the yankees that was the yankees that we watched in this series the new york yankees where you almost do feel like a slight sense of i don't want to say like entitlement because you know we haven't won shit in 15 years but it kind of reminds me of this feeling that i always had growing up of what i thought the yankees should be and just like a resilient representative group that no matter what will come out on top in the end and that's what this series really felt like and i'll say this right now if the yankees played in the playoffs every year, the way they played the Blue Jays, I think we probably had three or four World Series by now. <laughs> There's just an edge about them, dude. And I, like, yeah. I don't know what it is, but it's it's fascinating to watch because it seems like every single year we play them. You know, maybe we should transition into topic two here because we're going to talk more about the Blue Jays and all this shit. But it just yeah. seems like I tweeted this out earlier. The way I feel about the Blue Jays is how I imagine Astros fans feel about us. Just total ownage, dude. Total sure. image. Okay, let, let's get into topic number two yes. now, because I think now it's kind of important that we we talk about just the Yankees Blue Jays rivalry as a whole and kind of where it ranks in in terms of the Yankees top rivals, at least in the past couple of years. Anyway, I mean, when we look at the Yankees top five rivals, right, I'd probably say in no particular order, I think we're looking at Rays, Blue Jays, Red Sox, Astros, Mets. Those are probably like the five I'm looking at, right? Mets aren't in there for me. I would put the, probably the Guardians over the Mets, to be honest. But I, uh, yeah, sure. But I, I still think like Yankees, Mets, Rivals. I say Astros, Rays, Red Sox, Blue Jays are like the main four. Yes, that are yes, legitimate. I agree. Rivals. And then if you have to throw in a five, like yo, Mets sure. slash Guardians, whatever you want to go yeah. with. Um, but I think, bro, I think if you're looking at the the top rivalry, I'm not gonna go Blue Jays at number one just yet because we don't have like. Actually, no, I think I would go number one Blue Jays. Really? Just because it's like, it actually feels competitive. I would say Yankees-Astros is like the top rivalry. It should be. But the problem is the Astros have completely owned us to the point where it's like, it doesn't feel like a rivalry anymore. It just feels like the Astros piss on us in the post. But you could also, in a way, make that no, argument on the flip no. against the Jays. No, I can't because it's like, that's what I thought as well. And I think it's kind of Yankee bias. And I know like everyone's kind of been joking you about it. You're going to get the 500 record. Yeah, bro. Like the Yankees are 500 against the Blue Jays past couple of years. So it's like, we've totally owned them when it matters. Like at right. the end of the 2021 season, we own them. Last year, we own them. So far this season, we've kind of owned them. But it's like, if you're looking in the grand scheme of things, it's like, sure, we're still only 500 against them since 2021. So it's like, I can't say that we've totally owned them. But it feels like it just because it's like in the biggest games and the biggest moments, the Yankees have been the ones who came through. Yeah. So speaking on that, just to, when I say they own them, you're, you're right. They're, I think the, the stat is they're 22 and 22 against each other since the start of 20, something like that. Yes. Yeah, since the yeah. start of 2021. For me, though, what makes it 
to where, oh no, we we definitely own them is you go back to, to 2021. We pretty much end their season after a whole year. That was pretty much the beginning of them really turning into punks. They introduced the jacket. They started talking all this shit, acting like, you know, they've been there, done that one, like multiple World Series titles. We end their season essentially in 21. And then they, they come out with the, oh, it was that was the trailer. This is going to be the movie. And how does that year pretty much end for them, at least in terms of our rivalry? Vlad Jr. walks us off, claims it's his house, making a whole big mockery. The whole situation look like a total idiot. And then the very next day, we clinch the AL East in his own house. And then you have this series right here, dude. I mean, it's constantly them trying to stir up shit, stupid shit. And I guess we can get into the whole Aaron Judge thing. And it always seems to come back and bite them in the ass. And that's exactly what happened this year. I mean, you mentioned the Judge stats before. I do want to read them. Four games against Toronto, 429 average, so six for 14. Four home runs, seven RBIs, a 1.35 slugging percentage Aaron Judge had against the Blue Jays this year. And, dude, talk about the woke of sleeping giant thing that you said just about the Yankees. I mean, that really might be about Aaron Judge. Watching his postgame interview tonight and just this, this entire series, I think we, for the first time, saw maybe besides when the Houston shit first came out a couple years ago, but it seems like Aaron Judge hates the, the Toronto Blue Jays is what I'm getting at. I think they really, really pissed him off with the cheating allegations. I mean, that whole situation totally mishandled. Shouldn't even have been. I mean, at the time, I, I was can't pissed. believe it was a story. I though. was pissed at the Blue Jays announcers for bringing it up. I've kind of been talked out of that. Like, I guess it's fine to like speculate in a way, but more so the Blue Jays manager, everybody, by the way, on their coaching staff and just in their dugout seems like a total piece of shit. The fact that they said that there was an issue with that and going after the Yankees third base coaches, like positional alignment where he was behind the box saying all that while also acknowledging that your pitcher was tipping pitches to me, it just, it's, they like cancel each other out. You can't be calling judge a cheater while also acknowledging your tip, your pitcher was tipping pitches because by doing that, like we know there was no technological cheating here. You know, there's pitch com, there's all that, anything that judge would have, would have had an advantage of, let's just say he was guilty quote unquote of what gamesmanship to me, that's all totally legal. And I actually believe Judge's story, mind you. I do, about the whole chirping. I mean, we sure. know the Yankees dugout was chirping, and that makes total sense the way Judge was looking over there, too. It looked like a pissed-off dad. Like, you know what? Like, when you piss off your parents, and they just give you that look. Like, you're in church, and you, like, you make a loud noise, but, and they look yo, over. like. And Judge seemed pissed after the game. It felt like legitimate emotion. He wasn't happy with it. And I loved his post-game interview saying, it's not going to happen again. It's like, that's my fucking captain. Let's go. To sum up real quick what I'm saying, I believe Judge's story, but even if he was guilty, quote-unquote, guilty of what? catching signs being good at his job or the Yankees just being good on the field at, at picking up little details like that, totally legal and embarrassed. And that's not even to mention though, everything else the fucking blue Jays did, dude. There's no, so much the, more we're going to say, go ahead. The, the blue Jays embarrassed themselves uh, this yes. series. And I think that's also why it's like, the thing is, I know you said that you probably put them on like the same page as the Astros. And I think that's why the blue Jays rivalry Astros really are one for me, but Blue Jays, I'd say, are close. No, no, but that's why I think to... the Blue Jays might be higher up than the Astros because I feel like there's more like bad blood, more beef there, just because it feels like that there's a little bit more competition. It feels like there's a little bit more like hostility towards the teams. It doesn't really feel like Yankees Astros has that hostility, just because, like I said, it's like when was the last time we played like games against the Astros where it felt like the the season was on the line it's like yes bro, sir, the ALCS but, last year didn't even feel competitive but, but you could also say the Yankees Red Sox even before like say it's up you'll go back in time Yankees are up 3-0 in the 2004 ALCS people would and the Yankees at that point only knew anything like all they knew was owning the Red Sox well that's why both sides would admit that's a rivalry even, though no even the Yankee fans because there was there was hatred between them yeah, but I think then, I think it's the, the cheating Red Sox scandal that the rivalry kind of died though in a way sure but also with the Jays and the Astros, I'll always have to put the ad for now at least ahead of them because in the but end, like so the, the Jays though. are the first. The J sure, but the Astros don't care about the Jays us. are the they first. Us but that's year. not in a way like what I'm talking about. I guess I'm kind of saying like who I hate the most. And I look at it as okay. the Jays, the Jays are the first domino that has to fall. In the end, the Astros are still the ultimate quest that we have to conquer. So I, I look at it in, in a way of that, like, yeah, like dominoes. You knock the Jays off first, and then you get to the Astros. And because of that, I still look at that as like the ultimate that's big fair. bad guy in this, in this case is Houston. No, I, th I think that's very fair. But one thing I will say about the judge thing, I, maybe I just have eye problems, right? And I feel like no one's really mentioned this. Dude, what are you seeing if you're, like, going like this? I personally, dude, I'm not seeing anything. If I'm, like, given, like, a side eye, I'm barely seeing whatever's in my peripheral vision. And not to mention, dude, let's put this into play now. So they they, they show him looking over to the right as, who's who, whatever, the, as the pitcher's, like, coming to a set. No hitter... <laughs> Would even want that to where are 
looking for the sign, looking for the sign. What is he throwing? Oh shit, pitcher's coming. Home and also, what are you fucking saying? You're throwing these like you threw four sliders in a row right down the dick. Like, what do you think? You think that's why Aaron Judge is crushing balls off you? And dude, so so fantastic. You know, it was a whole big story, blown out of proportion. Everybody's talking about it. Blah blah blah. And then eighth inning tie game. Aaron Judge hits the ball what even further Amazing. than that first home run goes, and that was what his second of the game or whatever it was. Yeah. I mean, that was game yeah. one, and then. Today, as well, in game four, going deep. I mean, dude, talk about total ownage. Judge, we're seeing a different side of him, dude. We're seeing a different side of him. And it's came out in times, mostly just to do with the Astros and that shit. But he has an edge to him, and I absolutely love it. Yeah. No, he is low-key a shit talker, bro. He, Gabe said he, that, and I kind and of feel like Bro, that's why I love, like, the, it, the little He does it the right thing. way. He does it very well, actually. I think that's the perfect way to go to bat. And it's it perfectly kind of encapsulates what I love so much about Aaron judge, like going back to like the whole bat flips. He does it when it's necessary. You know, you're down 10, nothing. He's not going to bat flip, but if it's a playoff game, he's going to bat flip. Yeah. Subtly. You know what I mean? It's like, if you piss him off, if you do him wrong, like he'll throw some digs at you subtly. I'm with you. I'm absolutely like the the edge that he has is so perfectly just the right amount that it works, especially for him. Bro. But that's why it's like, I know you're like not that into music. It's like a Drake thing, bro. Like Drake will like sneak his people on songs and like, you're like, it might take a minute to process. Like, bro, you're not noticing that Aaron judge is like clowning the blue Jays with his little thing crossing on plate on like, unless like you're replaying it or like you see it on Twitter, bro. In the moment when, when he crossed home plate and did that, I don't know if they originally showed it on camera or what, but dude, I didn't even think until I saw it on Twitter. I was like, Holy shit. Aaron judges. He's doing not singles too. I know. Question. Do you think that's just a? I, I'll tell you what I hope for after. But do you think this is just a Blue Jays series thing? Or you think yeah, like, I think it's very similar it to when. Be, um, it, remember in Houston in twenty twenty one, they did like Judge did that thing. Yes, which remember? was awesome. But also remember how that ended. That ended with Altuve like walked us off, and it was like, yes. all right, never mind. Like that was like Astros. And here's another thing: how often with this Yankees court does this should kind of like backfire in our face? Not this series. No, we no came one out judged. on top. Usually, it kind of fucking backfires, like like in Houston, but this didn't. Knowing Judge, like once we leave Toronto, this is now irre- irrelevant to him. Um, and also like they have that that salt shaker thing now. So yeah, yeah I think that's. What I wouldn't want them to keep doing. It. I think that was good. You kind of leave it in Toronto. I want a home was... run celebration, dude. Like you, you like you see all the home run celebration. Like the Pirates have like the sword thing. I'd like the Yankees. Of course, to do something though, fun, it has to be like, something that comes organic. up naturally. Like, yes. dude, like this was perfect. Like that to I me know. is the premier example of like how a thing should come about. That and if. Judge were to say keep doing that, which I don't want him to, but if he were like that, technically wouldn't make sense of coming yep. up naturally. But um, one more thing I'll say on the Blue Jays series as well, totally random, but I want to shut him out. I thought Ryan Weber was going to blow this series for us, and you know, although uh, it's not like he he pitched great, but he was able to get out of it. And the Yankee bullpen, shout out Aaron Boone, he pieced together Game Four pretty damn well. Max sure. Mattis tweeted it out, and I want to uh, agree with. Them live on air. Let me just tweet a, or a read off what he tweeted. Every boon the boon press tonight paid off massively. Hicks gets the start. Three hits with a huge RBI. Hold Nestor went to Weber, Abreu, Ron at exactly the right times. All with a shoddy bullpen and shoddy bench. Boone had a pretty damn good series. So, and I'm just saying, if we're gonna call him out when he's bad, you also got to compliment him when he's good. And I think he had a pretty a pretty good series. Sure, with not a lot to work with, he uh, I guess he pushed the and right that's, buttons. And that's that's so, a like that's a true like manager job what do you have to do in game four one thing i will say about ryan weber tell me not he looks like a default road to the show character like even the way he throws bro like everything about him is just like yo plain jane like default mlb the show character i'm yes i i I tweeted out i think he like ryan weber looks like a ryan weber like he looks like his name he looks like yes that's case closed enough said Okay. Shout out to him though, bro. Shout out to Ryan yeah, no, Weber. Yeah, <laughs> shout out Ryan you know? Weber. We love you. You know, and um, Abreu too. Abreu looked good. I, that did. Chapman ball, I was like almost I for sure fun. that that was fair. Yeah. We didn't talk about Volpe, by the way. I know you wanted we, to do that. that that's topic five. Nice. That's topic five. It's topic five. How do you know? Yeah, well, I just know. I just I, know. I didn't say it was topic five actually. I, so we'll but see. I just we'll, I just did. So uh, um, we don't know before, about that you before we get to topic. Power. Before we got into topic number three, um, want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Foco. Yankees Avenue code 15% off. Use it. Um, but we have a massive giveaway. We want to show them my new shit first. Okay, do it. It's just gonna be a long ad. No, it's it's fine. They you haven't had that. I have had this, but I wanted to put it on oh. a show everybody my new stuff. Oh. So I've been needing a new backpack. Got a new backpack. Shout out Foco. But most notably, dude, I know you're jealous, Pat. I got a brand new bathrobe. 
What do I always freaking say? Anything with a Yankee logo on it, Foco probably has a bathrobe with a Yankee logo on it. Yeah. Are you not enamored by it, dude? No, I I love it. I wish I had it. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Pat did not get one. Pat did not get one. Uh, So for the giveaway uh, on Yankees Avenue right now, go to the Instagram page. Um, we just dropped the post. So what you're going to do in order to enter the giveaway, you're going to follow Yankees Avenue on Instagram. You're going to follow FOCO USA on Instagram. They're going to be tagged on the post. And you're going to comment two friends on that post. And you're going to be entering in the giveaway. We're going to have five winners. We're giving away three of these beautiful ass tropical shirts, bro. You you guys saw us wearing the, uh, the USA ones. I didn't get one of those, so just to more even. This one has like flamingos. There's a bunch of different styles. We're gonna be giving away three of those, and then we're giving away two of these these straw hats. Um, you guys could pick between like this judge one and the uh, the one that Dan has. So we're giving away two of those and three shirts. We're gonna have five winners. Be sure to enter. It's gonna be good. Why would you not want to win a giveaway, bro? We might be decked out in that when we go to the game next week on Friday. Maybe for anybody that might we'll be the Yankees Padres, May 26. Pat's definitely going to be there. I'm trying to get out there. I got to see what's good with the Yanks have, but Yankees Padres Friday night, me and Pat might be in the building. We'll, we'll see. see. Got to iron we'll out see. some details, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, but yo, topic number three, let's talk about Domingo Herman real quick. Uh, he was ejected for sticky stuff. Um, I think one of the umpires came out. I saw this on Twitter. He was like, it was the stickiest hand I've ever felt. Something stupid. Said the same like shit about fucking Max Scherzer. So you yeah. can go screw off. Um, was it the same umpire, by the way? Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. But I'm talking about umpires as a whole and the fact that MLB has sure. provided no clear line on what is allowed and what isn't. It's bullshit. Sure. But regardless, ejected, 10-game suspension, um, and also that kind of led to the injury of Ian Hamilton, I'm assuming, just because he came in, probably had to rush his his warm-up, had the the groin injury I think he he has. Yeah, he's um, so he's going to be missing some time, which which really sucks. Um, So now, like, I'm looking at Domingo Roman as a whole, bro. I think I tweeted this out uh, a couple of days ago. He is now maybe my least favorite Yankee of all time. Just like really looking at Domingo Herman's tenure as a New York Yankee, it's very, very difficult for me to find somebody who I dislike more than him, bro. Just based on like all the off the field stuff, all like the chaos that always seems to result from him being on the field. Sure, he has some great starts every now and then, but I just don't think Domingo Herman is worth the headache. And I wish the Yankees had enough starting pitching depth at this point where they didn't even have to bring him back. But the the problem is he's such a key part of the rotation right now because they have no depth where it's like we have to keep accepting him back with open arms when we shouldn't have to. Yeah, honestly, I mean, I just acknowledge that, yeah, he's a piece of shit, dude. But to me, it actually has nothing to do with it. Just for the fact of like, I don't, I separate it very much. Like I would never hang out with Domingo Herman in person. If I saw him in person, I'd probably want to punch him in the face. Thing is though, he's a pitcher for the Yankees. And if the Yankees were to cut him, bet your ass, 29 other teams will be ready to get him. That's just the business. That's just how it is. Knowing that, I just look, is he a good pitcher or is he not? And Domingo Herman is a damn good pitcher. So when he comes back from his 10 day little suspension, which by the way, I mean, I'm not totally like exonerating, uh, is that the word Herman out of all this? I mean, he definitely probably his hand probably was sticky as hell. And at some point you gotta know, like, dude, you're probably gonna get busted with this, especially knowing, like, dude, three weeks ago, you almost came pretty close to getting ejected then. So you kind of gotta be careful. But with that said, Domingo Herman this year has been actually really, really good. 375 ERA in the year, and that's with the first couple of bad starts that he had. Whip is down to 0. 0.90. Pat, a 0. 0.90 whip. Do you realize how good that that's is? What happens when you use sticky stuff, though, bro. I mean. Yeah, but I also, like, I don't know because his spin rate never really changed. His spin rate was normal, and it's not like he was using spider tack. It's, I, he definitely, there's a reason he was, his hand was sticky. So I don't want to say he was innocent or anything like that, but I also don't think that's why he was pitching well. Like, is that why Max Scherzer was good too? Like, I, I really, maybe it's tough. Maybe it's tough to even also, like, like, I'm, all, I'm not going to blame any pitcher right now for what's going on with the sticky shit. The only person or, like, I'm going to blame MLB. I'm blaming MLB and the umpires. I think they've handled this terribly. They have not made it clear what's really. You you disagree with that? Domingo Roman, this isn't even the first time. Like, he knew he was. And also, it was the worst possible timing for him to get called. Yeah, it was. It was the game where, like, everyone was like, oh, the Yankees are cheaters. Horrible timing. Like, bro, and then you get ejected for this. Like, it's also just very selfish because, like, it messed the Yankees bullpen up for for games to come. Like, 
I'm very, very annoyed by it. That. And I, I can't blame Major League Baseball for Domingo Herman, like, not realizing the situation and just, like, playing it super safe. You know, like, because this isn't the first time. But they haven't made it clear it. because he technically. Okay, so it wasn't Pine Tor, it wasn't Spider Tag. The umpire also says it wasn't rosin, but we have seen, and it's been proven, Cone did an experiment on ESPN. So many, Trevor Bauer's done it. Like, rosin can become incredibly sticky with a number of different things, even just rosin and sweat. So it is quite plausible to believe Herman, Scherzer, and there's been some other guys, I don't know, that they weren't using anything more than rosin, and MLB allows rosin. So, like, what are you saying? Like, if you use too much of this that we provide, like, you're going to get banned, although we provide it. it. To me, it's, we should get a clear line and a while ago, they should have, like, after Scherzer, they should have made it clear, like, what's going on here. Or even after Herman the first go-around, they should have been, like, pretty much came out with a statement, answered questions on the whole thing. Chris Rowe was, like, always rants about this, and he makes his point just phenomenally, and I, I agree with him so hard on it. They have not made it clear, Pat, about what is legal sure. and what isn't. Because in the I end— I still think Herman knows what he's doing, though. Even if you go back—let's just say—let's just talk Herman, Herman to the side. And I do think Herman's, like, a jackass for this partially, and it's just—of course, it's him, right? But even just talking about Scherzer, like— do we think Scherzer was using spider tack or was he using, I guess it's possible. We don't know, but it's just, I don't know. I just, I, I'm not like, it's not a situation where like, oh, you see Michael Pineda globbed up in pine tar. Like, oh, he's a selfish piece right. of shit. I, I don't equate it on that level. And also with that said, going back to what I said in the beginning, Herman's a good enough pitcher to where like, I am welcoming, welcoming him back. All right, Dan, topic number four. Uh, the Yankees have great news on John Carlos Stanton. Aaron Boone said he was going to be starting a rehab assignment within the next week, which is kind of insane because, dude, he might be back by the end of the month, which is really weird to say because the original timetable we were looking at, I know me and you both mentioned like early July was like yeah. realistic case scenario. And now the fact that he could be maybe be back by the end of May, I guess the injury wasn't as serious as everyone thought. But are you surprised by how quickly he's progressed? I'm surprised as hell, dude. But also, like, with that said, I guess we were just being very pessimistic about it. Maybe rightfully so. You know, when I posted this out on Instagram, on Yanks Ave, I was saying, wow, like, he's going to be back sooner than I thought. Maybe by the end of the month. And then somebody goes, well, I mean, that is the four to six weeks that they said. And I was like, oh, well, I guess it's just the fact that an accurate injury timetable is so rare these days that you just don't yeah. assume it's going to happen. Yeah, we were thinking... Like, we're at times where we're saying, like, yo, we get him back at, like, the second half. Like, that's probably what we're looking towards, right? But, dude, if he starts up a rehab assignment, which will probably be, like, it's not going to be, like, a game or two. He'll probably get at least a week's worth. But it's plausible. John Stan could be back by the end of the month. They also said, not this is on the same level by any means, but Josh Donaldson is probably on the same track as him as well, which, even so, well, just I to get Donaldson back. Timeline, he was building something with his daughter and hurt his thumb. Yeah, apparently, yeah. that gets just, like, a one- or two-day setback. And I guess that has him on the same thing <laughs> as Stan now, but... You're getting those two back. Most notably, obviously, Stan. And then we haven't mentioned it yet. Sevy is officially starting on Sunday. Where does Donaldson play, though? Who's our backup infielder right now? I IKF can't. and Waldo, I guess, technically. Not backup for Waldo, but he's part of the circulation. Uh, it's just weird. Because they'll have a decision like, to make. Yeah, no, it's going to be a really weird decision. That's why I'm like, yo, if they want to give Donaldson the Ellsbury tre treatment and kind of just be like, yo, just – Stay away. They might. And I would be shocked. The obvious one, at least a couple weeks ago, would be like, all right, Willie's not hitting, get rid of him, or Aaron Hicks. But now they're both kind of hitting. So, yeah, but I mean, no, I, I think you could drop Willie. I think you could drop Willie. Well, but also, like, would you want to drop Willie instead of Hicks? Like, is that just, you know, becoming yeah. a patch with a good couple of games? I, know. Like, I would I would drop Willie over Hicks. Yeah, I guess it's easier, easier decision, too, because, like, the money and yeah. all. But also... Yeah. Yeah, Savvy back on Sunday. Rodone threw from 90 feet. He's feeling good. <laughs> he might be back by the end of June. So, I mean, dude, like, vibes are good. Sure. Vibes yeah, are no. Good, dude. I know. And, and Stan coming back, I, I think that we can't even, like, underestimate how important that is to this lineup. Huge. Um, just having we'll a nice looking, looking in the line. Of that order. Nice yeah, looking it, lineup. It's going to be good. Um, All right. Talk up some real. Volpe. Topic number five. I want to talk about Anthony Volpe real quick. Um, just because I feel like we kind of give like a quick recap of where we're looking at for him because yo, everyone knows like the whole saga. I was pissed off that he was smiling after the game. He had his first career home run, but I watched his interview after the game on Wednesday night where he made that error in the 10th inning. His defense has kind of been sloppy over the past couple of games. And Meredith kind of set him up perfectly to like use the excuses like, yo, I haven't really played on turf before. And that's kind of why I got a bad hop, whatever. And he basically said, no, 
Like, there's no excuses for that. And, bro, when I heard that, and, of course, like, he said it with, like, a little melatonin. That's just who he is, though. He's not smiling. He's not being goofy. When I heard him say that, and I heard him say no excuses, he won me the F over, bro. And especially, like, the way he's been hitting lately, it's been very good. Just seeing that mentality from Anthony Volpe is what I love to see. I love to see, like, no excuses, bro. Like, taking accountability. That's all we ask for from, like, players on the Yankees, right? Like, don't call it luck. Don't blame it on stupid ass excuses. Like the fact that he's owning up to defensive miscues, it makes me very, very happy. And I think that we've seen like such incredible progression from him just within this first like month and a half of being in the bigs. I think it's great. Yeah, totally. And what's cool about it too, is like the turf legitimately could have been a factor and he probably knows that too, but he's not going to say that he owns up to it. And I'm with you, dude. Like that was awesome to see. And yeah, big Homer the other day or not the other day, Sunday, today when we're recording this or yesterday, if you're watching Sunday. this. Sunday. You know what I do a lot? I just equate game fours or like series finales with Sundays. Like it could be a fucking Tuesday. And if it's a series finale, I'll just call it Sunday. Anyways, Homer off the pole. That was nice. And you look at the way his stats are headed. Yo, probably a lock. This dude's at least touching 40 stolen bases because he's already at 13, 13 for 13. And if you look at the homers, he's currently at six. That has him on pace for 25. Or no, he's at seven. Excuse me. That has him on pace for 25. So, dude. Like, obviously, there's going to be growing pains. You know, there's going to be times you're like, oh, god damn. Like, the other night, game three, I had my first, like, kind of being pissed off moment at Volpe when he made that error. It's like, all right, this has happened kind of a lot in the past few games. Yeah. Got to chill. But with the highs and lows that we should expect, in the end, if Anthony Volpe overall plays good shortstop defense, steals over 40 bases, hits over 20 home runs, probably makes him, like, I don't know, at least a three, maybe even a three and a half, four war player. Dude, for your first year in the big leagues, man? Shaping yeah, up good, dude. Him, Shaping bro. up good. It really, really shout is. And you just hope, mentioned this last week, but you hope by October you kind of get, at least in terms of, you know, this part of his career, a somewhat finished product, like as polished as possible for a 22-year-old in the big league starting at short for the Yankees. So I will say, though, love him in the seventh hole. I, I think it just makes the lineup, like, feel so much deeper. I think, like, you're not looking at a seven, eight, nine black hole anymore. The only problem is, like, going back to what we said last episode, we don't have another leadoff hitter. That's, like, that's the only thing... I hate Glaber Torres leading off, bro. I know. Like, I think when Stan comes back, I think you might push DJ back up to the probably. To the that, that, that's that probably sense. fine because then with the way Bader's hitting, you could put him fifth, and that's reasonable. And yeah. then, yeah, I I said DJ's probably going back to the leadoff spot. I mean, still though, I I think Volpe at his best, and you hope for this once again by October. Our best option at leadoff is a good Anthony Volpe. Sure. Outside of that, I would probably still say, I mean, probably Bader or. We really, yeah, like you said, we don't have many guys that are the clear alternative, really. So Unless you I don't know though. <laughs> but honestly, he probably is the technically the best option outside of Volpe when he's doing well. Judge, I disagree though, because I, I in always terms like of the on base and being the best like, hitter. No, because I don't think like him there either. Compared I like to two the or philosophy three, philosophy where it's like, yo, you put Judge two or three, it's like you kind of have a chance of someone being on base for him. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's situations where I do like Judge at leadoff. Last year, there was a time where I remember it made sense. But you really liked him leadoff. Yeah. Oh, no, I believe. Yeah, I definitely. There's times where I do like him at leadoff. Even three is fine. I think two is perfect because it's kind of like a happy medium. Like you said, there's a chance someone could get in front of him, especially that's nice if you do have a good leadoff hitter. And also still, at for the most part, maximizing as many at-bats as possible because you really do add a pretty substantial amount of bats over the course of the season by having him up there but yo good show today dude great show this great. had fantastic Bro, this energy this probably was... the best energy we've had all season to be honest with you yeah and it would make sense because this is probably my favorite series easily of the season probably i think i said this to you earlier going back to early 2022 the all yankees are little, back bro uh, all it took was a little series in toronto bro and judge broke the fucking leaf dude this series went great yeah, dude even the game great. we lost i mean we were in it till the end and it was like a competitive game or whatever i'll tell you though that that game three the extra innings rules just on either side of it makes me just not care about the outcome of the game in a way. Yeah, it's annoying. I, I was telling my Same. boys today, bro. It's like I remember watching the Yankees like walk off compilation from last year. I didn't remember half of them because they just don't have the feel. Walk offs do not feel the same anymore. They yeah, don't. Dude, like, it didn't sting in a way because like no matter what, I remember the game turns to the tenth inning in Game Three, and I just like know the game's over, so I like lose interest in a way. It's like all right, this yeah. is ending soon, and even whether you win, whether you lose, it just doesn't feel as real. So that rules yeah, the bullshit. But rules suck. Bottom line is this was a fantastic series. We are set up for a very good situation now. We also play a nice, easy layup against the Cincinnati Reds. Well, I mean. Well, yeah, we never. I shouldn't say easy layup, but we got the Reds coming up. And then we have a series with Baltimore back at home. And then after Baltimore, the Padres come to town. 
Yo, one more thing I think we should like mention really quickly. Shout out to Nestor with a great rebound. Yes. Glad great you mentioned rebound that. Yes. Yeah. He was very good pitching yeah. in the seventh. And I was surprised when Boone brought him back out there. When we ended I think up it's because of the lack okay. of bullpen really. Yeah. 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 Even so, though, because there's Nestor, the one issue he's really having this year, and for the most part, it's been a big issue, is the third time through the order. But yeah, he was good, dude. Six innings, yeah. two runs. And outside that Shout first out. inning, like, he really started to look sharp, which is good. So. All good things. All good things. Guys, drop a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you are new. See you guys next time. Let's go Yankees.